नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स ऑन बी ऑफ ऑफ यूजीसी एच आर डी सी गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी माई सेल्फ प्रोफेसर प्रीति मयानी इज वेलकमिंग ऑल ऑफ यू इन टू डेज ऑनलाइन वर्कशॉप ऑन एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी कैपेसिटी बिल्डिंग ऑफ फैकल्टी सो फ्रेंड्स टूडे वी हैव अवर एमिनेंट रिसोर्स पर्सन विथ अस आई एम वेलकमिंग यू सर प्रोफेसर एस के यादव जी and all the participants of this workshop so on behalf of my director of hrdc gujarat university professor dr jagdish joshi ji and my uh, senior most colleague professor c g brahmpat ji and the entire team of hrdc gujarat university is welcoming all of you <coughs> so friends let me introduce first our today's resource person it's my pleasure to introduce you sir so once Thank again you. i'm welcoming you sir professor s k yadav was head of the department of teacher education in ncert new delhi and also served as academic consultant in national council of teacher education new delhi he had conducted many researches and completed many research projects at national and international levels the most important contribution in the major research project impact of in service teacher training under ssa on classroom transaction involving 15 states was sponsored by the mhrd government of india the published report is available in four volume in the ncert new delhi another contribution is development of performance indicators for teachers for self assessment of their own progress it is being used in all the states and uts universities and there is separate app for it besides he had published number of research papers in national and international journals he had also organized and chaired many national and international conferences he also made a significant contribution in the revision of centrally sponsored scheme of teacher education which is being implemented in all the states and union territories in the country he was associated with the work on education strict by international organization unesco sarc world bank british council etc so friends uh, let enjoy the experimental knowledge of professor s k yadav ji sir i am inviting you for uh, your uh, today's knowledge sharing process so once again sir uh, i am inviting you uh, uh, <coughs> good afternoon madam priti good afternoon thank you thank you to interact in the building program respected director sahab joshi sahab brahm bhat ji uh, the sirusi pandya ji and other members who are joining this program as per ugc we are organizing the capacity building program so it is very essential to have a capacity building program time and again for the upliftment of the knowledge attitude skill of our <coughs> faculty who are working in different institute of higher learning whether they are working in college or working in uh, university should i speak in english or hindi madam yes sir um, i think english is uh, most preferable okay uh, then uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, this capacity building program uh, is very very essential therefore uh, this then uh, ugc has suggested many capacity building program for example this fip uh, faculty induction program they have developed uh, 10 module in uh, guru dakshta so these are essential for all the newly recruited faculty who are working uh, who uh, join in the institute of higher learning so they have to attend it is a compulsory just like uh, you know teacher education institutions organize the teachers program Uh, before joining their uh, services it's the same way there are refresher courses there are orientation courses there are other courses so these are all the capacity building program so these are very essential to update our knowledge from time and again 
now uh, for example now we have a new uh, new development come new changes come new knowledge come so definitely uh, uh, there is a need to organize the capacity building program working in the different institutions uh, these days there is a lot of talk about the national education policy 2020 this is a new development new have been suggested many instead many news program uh, uh, new schemes have been suggested with target therefore it is very essential to know all of us how this policy will be implemented and how it will help us in developing the capacity of all the faculty so friend we should know before that that every country has a policy and the education is governed by the policy on education if we have a quality policy definitely our country make progress and we can develop the personality of the children so uh, <clears throat> we have a policy uh, since uh, before independence and uh, after independence but after independence you know the first policy was evolved in 1968 so that was the basis of the kothari commission we must understand that when we have a policy before that we have to conduct the researches we have to seek the opinion from the target group target group mean teacher teacher educator uh, professors or the skill worker managers and so on and so forth so before that particularly after independence uh, the first commission was set up by government that is a uh, radha krishnan commission and we call it a university education commission and uh, this commission has recommended very important recommendations and these recommendations work you can say in india because before that uh, uh, it was not possible to have a policy so our uh, education was gone with the recommendations of the commission so this commission has suggested that we should have more or more training to all the faculty for the new development and it should be on continuous basis so uh, radha krishnan commission suggested that in our country we should have more or more trustees more or more institutions therefore at the time you know 1950 51 only 20 less than uh, 30 universities were there in country so if we will have not have the universities it is very difficult to have researches because researches play an important part to improve the quality of life to uh, to have a new knowledge new information and different from the traditional one so therefore this commission suggested that we should have a university grant commission which will allow to have um, universities in different part of the country have a institution of higher learning so and uh, the ugc will also recognize the different courses in the universities and colleges so the recommended then this recommendation implemented by government of india and in 1956 a full fledged university grant commission was set up in india and this policy uh, you know very well and today because ugc Uh, recognized many universities rec uh, recommended many universities now we have more than 1000 university in the country we have uh, more than 50000 colleges of uh, higher education and there are some autonomous colleges also and there are say, iim uh, and other fourth so therefore uh, this played a major role and it has improved the quality of our life and it has improved the quality of life and do higher education so then, then uh, there was another commission you know in um, <clears throat> 1964 66 that's kothari commission everybody knows and name is the education because policies are formulated to develop the nation therefore name of this uh, uh, all policies aim is to develop the nation if we have a better education policy our country will be developed all section of the society all the in the sector uh, uh, maybe education maybe industry maybe health 
all will make progress. So all depend on the education. If we have a quality education, definitely we will have better engineer, better doctor, better bureaucrat, better professor, uh, better researcher. Uh, so uh, this name is very clear, education and national development. So uh, many recommendations were made how to improve the quality of um, pre-primary uh, pre education, primary education, secondary education, higher education, technical education education management education it has been suggested in this policy uh, in this uh, you can say uh, in this commission and the commission has also recommended on the basis of the research that we should have a new structure uh, before uh, 64 we have a different structure in our country somewhere uh, palestine somewhere uh, alam and somewhere 12 different names and different structure so uh, this commission realized and recommended that we should have a common structure of education in the country. So we should have 10 plus 2 plus 3. So this structure was recommended by the Kothari Commission. If this structure will be there, definitely our country will make progress. So this structure and the recommendation of uh, this Kothari Commission was in incorporated in the national policy. First First policy was based on the recommended in 1968. So here, how our education should work, all things should have been clearly. How our language, because we have different, we should have a language problem. It can be taken. Formula has been suggested. Many training and research program were suggested. Many teacher education institutions, how this should work. All section management and this. The, so there is one difference between the recommendation of the policy and the recommendation of the uh, commission because commission recommendations are not uh, compulsory for the government to incorporate all these recommendations. But if these are incorporated in the policy, then it is a binding on the government to implement. For example, 10 plus 2 plus 3 was in incorporated then uh, it uh, uh, has been implemented till today it's a 10 plus 2 plus 3 in whole of the country the structure of the school and structure of the higher education so uh, like that uh, this uh, uh, policy recommendation in 1973 there was a um, you can say national council of teacher education you may be knowing you set up in the right uh, how to improve the quality of teachers because you know everything depends on the quality of teacher the quality of teacher depend on the teacher education so first uh, you can say one uh, important uh, um, you can say a committee was formed how to improve the quality of teacher education so in the name of the council of teacher education uh, the uh, this nct was set up in ncrt to improve the quality of uh, teacher education if we have better teacher, prepare better teacher, we have uh, you know, better teaching, we will have a better teaching, then we will have a better quality students. And when quality students, they will become, uh, you can say, better, uh, um, uh, you can say they will perform better in all sectors if they want to go for engineering, medical or management, etc. And then our country definitely make progress. That is the objective of the national policy on education. So the second policy uh, in this country was formulated in 1986. The basis was same for the um, researches. In 1985, uh, in uh, 1983, nine, uh, even, uh, two commissions were set up by government of India. That is one is the for school education, another was for higher education. School education was chaired by Professor Chattopadhyay. Higher education was chaired by Professor Rahish Ahmed. And they have uh, uh, consulted minds available how to, uh, uh, what are the existing problem of different countries, how these can be relevant to our country. They also sought the opinion from the all section of the society of the our country. They also uh, consulted the researches conducted in our country, outside the country. So this document also recommended many recommendations how in the next 10 years our country can make progress. So this was done and uh, <clears throat> uh, on the basis of that one document was prepared uh, when we were preparing these uh, reports. 
This is challenges of education. In 1985, government of India, Ministry of Education, developed the challenges of education document. These are terms in the pre-primary, primary, secondary, senior secondary, higher education, technical education. A, 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 a pink cover document is available in the library when it's uh, um, we listed all the issues and challenges our teacher education and, and other areas were facing so on the basis of that the second post education was formulated that is in 1986 so uh, 1986 has recommended many uh, recommendations which were very which are very relevant also and which has improved a lot in our uh, education including all sectors for example we are talking today uh, our home and you are also attending the capacity building program from your residence or from your institution this is due to the research and this research has been Recommend uh, uh, um, commission's recommendation, policy recommendation, or the quality of research have been improved. So in ICT, we are the one of the leader, global leader in the country, uh, in the world. So this is a you can say you can see the difference. This was not possible 1950. It is possible today in 2020 because we have made a lot of researches. We have and this platform where we are talking with each other that is human resource development and earlier in 1986 policy it has recommended academic staff colleges and it was visualized that we capacity building program of higher education faculty through um, academic staff colleges so academic staff colleges are now called the human resource development center so their job is to organize different type of the capacity building program related to the research, related to the new development, maybe FIPs are being organized, pressure course in the different disciplines are organized, some new things are, orientations are going, for example, we are talking today. So this is the recommendation which was implemented by government of India, with Ministry of Education, Earlier, it was a Ministry of Human Resource Development. So now at present, we have 66 human resource development centers in the country established in the different state and central universities. Uh, they are organizing such program to develop because uh, when, our cap uh, we, when we have competent and updated faculty, definitely our quality of teaching will be there and we are a quality research, etc. So uh, these so many recommendations about the researches, about the training program, more and more training program are organized after implementing this policy. And you heard about the Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission of Teacher and Teaching. So this is a, a you know flagship scheme of government of India. This is uh, is very clear National Mission of Teacher and Teaching. National, we should work together in a mission mode to improve the quality of teacher. National mission of teacher and teaching. If we will improve the quality of teacher, definitely there will be quality of teaching. If there will be quality of teaching, then we will have a quality of students. And they will make an excellent uh, performance in the field where they will work. So this scheme has visualized that we should international level uh, standard of our education in higher education and we should uh, provide platform we should have a, uh, you can spot from the outside country we should uh, compare the syllabi and update the syllabi and researches should be of such standard so in this scheme 82 institutions set up for providing the capacity building program time and again so this is a, you know, now you might have heard school of education are set up in state and central universities about, then we have faculty development center like HRDC, teaching learning center like HRDC, we have management in IIM, we have science uh, and uh, this uh, <coughs> institute of science uh, in uh, Bangalore. So, so like that uh, in IITs. So this has been visualized and these are, being, these are set up 
and these are uh, working improving the quality of higher education by way of uh, you can say involved experts from india and the, the outside so there are many uh, you can say reform came on the basis of 1986 policy then in 1990 this policy was reviewed by uh, rama murthy it is called rama murthy committee and then in 92 again it was reviewed by the janardhan professor janardhan so and keb central advisory board of education so uh, uh, this was a not a policy but the policy was reviewed and many recommendations were included in this reviewed policy one recommendation for example that we should have link with the field in, in any field we work we should have a link with the field only then we will have a realistic and quality level education for example in teacher education program the teacher education uh, when we prepare a teacher when we teach the theoretical concept and when we give the practical aspects so constantly we should have linkages with schools or the field where we can experiment we can teach we can practice same way in medical same way in engineering we should have a link with the industries etc the engineer so this is a very important because you know when we have a link with the field our policy will be realistic and whatever we recommend in the policy it will be implemented and there will be no mismatch between the recommendation and its implementation so this is another important thing we everybody is knowing that uh, 92 up to 92 there were the entrance examination were conducted by the different universities for example uh, delhi university jamia university gujarat university all are conducting their uh, admission test uh, for engineering medical management or the degree course etc to so, student were under great stress sometimes the same date uh, same exam in the both the places of delhi university as well in jamia or in the chennai university so then uh, children were under great stress parents were also under great stress a lot of money was also you can uh, um, used expenditure was very high to run from one place to another place both parents and this um, son or daughter so what happens this policy recommended that we should have a common entrance examination so that they have not to go anywhere so the common entrance examination was recommended by this reviewed policy and the stress the human resources the funding were utilized in a very proper way and it was the need of the hour this policy made this implemented by the government of india now um, these things are coming to field everybody knows it as a third policy of india uh, was uh, you can say uh, <coughs> uh, evolved in the 2000 uh, uh, 20 in 2020 everybody knows there was a lot of discussion everywhere in every nook and corner of this country so uh, before that in 2014 after uh, coming this government in power they set up a committee that is subramanian committee you may be knowing so uh, then subramanian committee uh, prepared a draft and uh, submitted to the government of india and then uh, again in 2017 kasturi uh, you may be knowing he was the chairperson of the isro so under his leadership uh, chairperson ship another committee was set up in between uh, uh, there were development and so taken but uh, this committee under his engine leadership they developed a draft they talked they consulted all the document or their policy recommendation earlier research document and they have sought opinion from throughout country from all section of the society whether they are skilled worker or the unskilled worker in managerial position teacher teacher educator panchayat 
so many uh, you can say they went from pillar to post and collected their opinion and they developed the draft in 2019 again he, uh, the draft was submitted ministry of human resource development and the human resource development placed this draft in the website of this ministry and sought opinion again so then two lakh uh, uh, this, uh, so these were analyzed, consolidated, and this policy was finalized on the uh, on 29th July uh, 2020. The government of India uh, notified this policy, and this policy uh, was declared, and, uh, and the whole whole country then was there was a lot of discussion uh, how to implement it, and till today it is going on. There are some recommendations have been implemented. There are some recommendations are to be implemented, because the uh, significant thing of this policy is that they have given the target for each recommendation. Uh, by this date, this recommendation should be implemented. And the whole will be implemented by 2040. So there are some principles they have, uh, you can say, suggested by, uh, the, uh, before that uh, on the basis of this principle. Our country should become again a global leader. We all know that we were the WISH group in ancient time. We have uh, Taxila University. We have Nalanda University. We have Eugene University. And like that, there were many universities. There were many students from different parts of the world used to come. In Nalanda University, more than 10,000 students used to come from China, Hong Kong, and many countries. And all disciplines uh, have a very advanced level of the studies. So uh, uh, we were the, uh, you can say, global leader at that time. But due to certain reason, we could not uh, sustain and uh, something happened. So uh, due to those constraints, this policy uh, recommended, and this is a vision of this policy, we should attain our global leader status again, as we were in ancient India, by priority education. So this is a vision of this policy. And this policy, uh, uh, the vision is to be realized with the, the principles uh, uh, they have uh, <clears throat> suggested in this uh, 2020 national education policy. First is the access. We have to provide the access because in 50, I have already shared with you, we have only less than 30 university. Now we have more than 1,000 universities. So access has been um, expanded and government has tried to provide uh, the facility of higher education or school education throughout country because our country is very vast and the geographical situation is very difficult. So there are some terrain, there are some areas where such facilities of schooling, facilities of higher education, technical education are not uh, available. Till now, particularly they have focused some areas, for example, one is the northeastern state where there are less university. So uh, uh, the government has mentioned here in this policy that priority will be given to provide the facilities, means schooling or higher learning or universities in the areas where these are not available. So uh, uh, this is a one important, uh, you can say, principle and government is attending in efforts with the help of all these state government and uh, other uh, these national bodies. Now, uh, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> and their modal colleges will be opened in the area which are deprived so far. Because in the COVID period, we know it very well, there are some areas not cope up with the studies in school and colleges because facilities were not available. Maybe infrastructure was not there, and facilities were not there, electricity was not there. There are uh, constant. Anyway, so it is in the policy recommendation that we should give priority, and government is making and uh, this recommendation, uh, and they are implementing. 
uh, with the help of the different agencies. Another important uh, uh, this principle for this policy is equity. That we in this country where the large section of the population with different segment, different sector, different geographical situation, different races, different castes, uh, different religion. So equity has to be maintained. If we will not provide education to all, our country will not make progress. The objective of the policy will not be realized. Therefore, it has been recommended and the principle of this policy that we have to provide education to all sections of society, uh, whether they are living in JNK or in uh, this plain area, hilly area, coastal area, wherever. And uh, if we will not provide education, uh, maybe school education, higher education, we will not make progress. So emphasis has been given too much in this policy. That's equity has to uh, you know, keep into consideration and facilities are to be provided. The, uh, another is equality. We should have a quality of um, education because uh, it doesn't mean that you have enrollment, you have facilities, but there is no quality teaching. If there is no quality teaching, definitely our purpose will not be served. Uh, for example, uh, there are some institutions where you know it, there is a lot of rush for the admission. Reason is only the maybe school, maybe colleges, maybe university in the country. You know it very well. There is no need to uh, name a few institutions, but you know it. So we all know it. So there are a lot of mad rush. Why? Because there is a quality teaching. This quality type of the research. And so therefore, uh, their performance also <clears throat> have a better as compared to other institutions. So this policy emphasized that we should not find too few. We have to uh, implement and provide quality education throughout all India with the help of our institute of higher learning, including uh, colleges and universities. So this is also very important. Uh, you can say I am of this uh, um, policy. Affordability, because in every country, like our country, we have also, there are some, you can say rich person, there are some poor person, there are, the education should be cheap so that every section of the society can afford, afford everybody can get the education with their resources with their means of the, uh, you can say, income. So uh, this policy will keep eye on it and this, uh, uh, the institution will not able to increase uh, fees, etc. as their own way. There will be watch and regulatory body, which I will coming to you, and they will not allow them to increase in their own way. So affordability is also one of the important recommendation and it is accountability here when we all will be accountable individual will be accountable institution will be accountable uh, and this uh, <clears throat> you can see university will be accountable and uh, all our government will be accountable definitely this policy will be implemented and we will able to guide and we will able to realize the vision for again uh, gain, uh, regaining the status of uh, Vishu group. Now, uh, this policy, mm, these are the things, but these are, uh, there are some important recommendations for realizing uh, the goal and realizing this principle. First thing, they have suggested a new structure. The structure is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Uh, it doesn't mean that uh, this recommendation uh, to revise the structure is the opinion of the six person who are the member and chairperson of the committee. No, they have consulted many researches. They have consulted the many structure of the different part, part of the world, uh, sought opinion from all of us and all section of the society. Then, uh, then uh, the, uh, on the you can say, um, then they came on 
from the conclusion this structure will be better for our country why it is better because they have added the five means uh, this uh, foundational stage foundation you know of a um, house is strong then house uh, life will be more if foundation is weak definitely you know it very well but therefore of student uh, strong the stu- student can make progress in life and uh, in better achievement so you know it that five means three pre primary uh, three years a child will come to school he will play he will uh, learn how to sit how to talk how to play how to eat how to enjoy with the other uh, um, children so three years will be play way schools as we are having in the public school we know it very well in high public school achievement is there high they have a pre uh, in pre primary means called the lkg ukg kindergarten different names so there they don't have a formal uh, reading or study they uh, teach them uh, how to enjoy in the school activities uh, these activities are available as these are available in your home they will start and enjoy a whole of the day uh, maybe 4 hour 3 hour 2 hour depends on from place to place so therefore achievement of the public school is better this research study says so this policy recommended that every school should have a pre primary in all the 15 lakh schools if able to get the pre primary definitely the child will enjoy and child will join and join class 1 automatically because five means three primary and then class 1 and 2 so uh, and now structure is uh, is that after attaining 6 years a child is admitted in class 1 what happens when and he is coming the home with all uh, enjoyment with the parents and with the grandparents and with the other uh, brother sister he or she doesn't like when he come to the school because we start immediately the formal level of the uh, numeracy literacy alphabet etc then child uh, generally fed up and they leave the school therefore drop out rate has been more everybody knows it uh, <coughs> so but after having the pre primary they will not feel that you are going to school they are enjoying and automatically they will be promoted to class 1 and they will enjoy and they will be foundational stage they will learn uh, learning uh, also in a informal way and again plus 3 say so third and fifth that is a, a preparatory stage means we will prepare them the formal study some literacy numeracy or some of the um, uh, math or some uh, counting etc these will be in formal way on a very interesting way these will be provided to the students then it comes 6 uh, 7th 8 that is a middle stage the middle the structure provided uh, you can say uh, in a content knowledge in the different subject as we all know it and then there is a 9th 10th 11th and 12th that is a sex then a higher level of content and we prepare them for the employment so this is a structure uh, suggested and i hope uh, after implementation we will have a better result why better result because pre primary will help in improving the enrollment in the quality and then our higher education enrollment uh, grew gross enrollment rate is about 27 in the uh, country as in the uh, um, different other countries in the advanced countries it is more than 80% so why because they have such facilities uh, this uh, policy has also recommended and the policy also emphasized that by 2035 because i have already told they have given the target 2035 we should have a 50% uh, you can say uh, the, um, of the Um, enrollment in the universities but uh, if such mechanism is implemented definitely it will be 50% so uh, uh, this policy uh, how it can be done it is the um, you can say curriculum framework is 
is being uh, developed uh, in NCRT with the help of the different experts of the country in ECC, early uh, childhood education and care. And it is also um, uh, visualized in the policy uh, that Anganwadi, because only one state in the country where pre-primary is linked with the primary school, that is a Sikkim state. For the literacy of Sikkim is very high. This is a uh, um, evidence, this is a research base, this you can see. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, this Anganwadi um, center will be converted into pre-primary. All necessary training will be given by NCRT and other uh, institutions. Those who are they will be uh, develop their capacity. Those who are not trained, they will be provided additional training or diploma or certificate, etc. So things are going on or uh, uh, <clears throat> work is in progress. And now, uh, this uh, uh, it is also a uh, uh, 2025 up to class third. All will be provided numeracy and literacy. This is also a, a step of already has been taken by this um, policy and important thing which have been uh, you can say um, implemented or recommended that up to primary level we should provide education in the mother tongue everybody knows that we can learn uh, and we can understand all the issues concept if these are available in our mother tongue. Because when the child uh, understand the language of mother, therefore name mother tongue. If mother speak in English, then they, um, without going to school, child speak in English. If child, uh, a child can speak Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, or Hindi, Punjabi, Urdu, all languages, because uh, it depends on mother which language they speak. Everybody knows it. So therefore, this policy has emphasized. And even because, you know, uh, you might have heard in the paper and read in the newspaper that um, government of Madhya Pradesh has translated the document of the medicals and the engineer in Hindi. And these are available and students definitely, uh, they will able to uh, <clears throat> come uh, able to uh, you can their studies now uh, the language problem will not be harder because problem many students particularly from the rural areas there the english language teacher or the, the some there we know it very well so difficult to continue in the higher education but literature is mostly available in higher education so now it is being translated in the original languages throughout the country definitely our more engineer more doctor more managers will be there and nobody is uh, restricting them to consult the uh, document in english also because they are also available they can consult sometimes they say sir you are uh, um, you can say um, <clears throat> promoting the mother tongue or the regional language then we will not make pro progress we end in the world no and nobody can, uh, um, you can read English, you can continue with the English, you can uh, learn this language also. Three language formula is available. You can, now there is a facility. You have a document in the regional language also, you have a document in the English language also. So uh, it is up to you. And there are examples in the world. They are the uh, developed advanced countries, China, you know it, daily we are talking about the China, daily we are talking about the Russia, daily we are talking about the Japanese. They, uh, they teach uh, the uh, education in their own lives. So, but no, uh, if you want to continue, you can continue with that also. But things are available. And now I hope the uh, journal, uh, you can say, gross enrollment ratio will definitely increase. So this is a very important thing. And from sixth, there is another thing. Uh, because, you know, uh, <clears throat> general system. So there are three, um, you, know, you can say, component or the parts of the body where we uh, usually discuss uh, that this cognitive, affective and psychometer. So uh, these domain, Generally, in Macaulay system, emphasis was on 
cognitive. They promoted that we should know the English language, we should know the mathematics, so that we can run the administration. But they have emphasized in our education about the effective and the psychomotor. If we will have no skill development, it is very difficult to prepare a or the human being. Total development personality will not be there. Our late, uh, you can say, uh, father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, emphasized time. Education should be through work. So in Varda in 1935, uh, and basic education was emphasized. And he said all uh, subjects should be taught through work education, work experience. However, this was continued and made a part of our uh, curriculum uh, um, after independence in uh, all the schools. But what happens, it was not emphasized and uh, it was not given the priority as we were giving the priority to the math and science and the languages. So this policy emphasized that all students should have a skill-based course from class 6th and it should be integrated curriculum and examination will be same as the uh, mathematics or science in an integrated way. So, so uh, class 6th, every student will take the one skill program, one vocation, maybe computer, maybe in some industry, maybe agriculture, so many things. Uh, these are available as per their own choice. And 10 days, 10 days there will be bagless. They will take back, they will go to the vocation where they will develop the skills. Because, uh, uh, and it is integrated. Now we have a skill development ministry also. So there are some years also. So therefore, uh, they, in this way, we can have it all domain of the personality. We will have a cognitive, we will have effective, we will, and we can able to develop the personality in a better way. So this policy has emphasized this way. And this is a very important and significant thing has been in this policy. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, and there is another, uh, I, I have um, already um, shared with you, equitable, inclusive educated child in the country. Special zone will be set up in the disadvantaged region across the country. Pupil-teacher ratio in school will be 25 to 1. And curriculum will be inclusive. It has been emphasized in this policy. A aim is to create coherent set of educational facilities. So the uh, same way uh, uh, in, in universities, the structure has been suggested that there will be uh, now <clears throat> uh, we have a graduation for three, but this policy has recommended that we should have graduation with research four years. But uh, in three years, due to some, uh, you can say, exigency, due to some problem, if you uh, pull on with the education, so your money, your time used to be waste. But now this policy has recommended that we, if we complete one year of them, then you will get the certificate course. And if you want to discontinue, you can discontinue. If you want to uh, join again after one year or two year on situation normal, so you can join. And then if you complete two years, you can get the diploma. If you can uh, uh, complete three years, as usual, you get the degree as we are getting today. If you get the four year with research, this is a research degree, four year with research degree. So a uh, research component will be emphasized. Then you uh, degree, only, uh, you can say <clears throat> owner degree. And there is a facility available. If you want to do uh, research, so after four year, a lot of uh, work has been done in the fourth year of the graduation. You can directly go for the research. You can go and you can join. So, uh, uh, but if you want to do uh, PhD um, post graduation, you can do it. There is no problem. After uh, this uh, three years, you can complete uh, the post graduation. Then, as usual, facilities are there. Then, degree are there after class uh, 12. 
this is also a very important significant uh, development uh, in this policy um, uh, and that's a uh, you can say whenever you uh, have a um, favorable condition you can join when favorable condition also not there you can leave and you can join again this is a flexible in the interest of the students this is a very very this will be very very useful whenever you want to go you can study and you can continue so uh, uh, this uh, policy has recommended and universities uh, there are more than 1000 university as i have shared with you earlier and more than 50000 colleges so these all will be converted into research intensive university teaching intensive university or autonomous in uh, they have to opt the work is going on so all universities will be divided into two teaching intensive or research intensive research intensive in university means they will focus on the researches more focus on the researches less teaching in teaching you know this graduation post graduation or phd work etc will be there uh, they will focus on teaching less on the research so there are two types of and there will be and third type will also be out of two these colleges will be autonomous they have their own curriculum uh, own system uh, they can provide their degree to the student but they have to convert either into teaching or into research it is option for them to uh, uh, <clears throat> they will also slowly become a small university now there will be no affiliation of the university affiliation with the university not be there in future so this is a you can say a structure suggested uh, um, by this policy and now no fragmentation there will be multi uh, you can say um, all interdisciplinary multidisciplinary uh, no single institution in the country we, uh, in our country today we have teacher education institution uh, there are about 16000 uh, teacher education institutes uh, working as a stand alone some are universities some are diets some are iscs some are cities like that so now uh, they will have to convert multidisciplinary whether uh, maybe it is agriculture university agriculture university will also be a multidisciplinary engineering college will also be multidisciplinary this will also be multidisciplinary because in iit delhi they have started the other course of science and social science in uh, iit kharagpur they have started the course of the uh, teacher education so slowly things are moving and these are being implemented because target dates are given so now you will get a uh, in environment of academic with different disciplines so this is uh, the rigid separation of the discipline will not be there rigid separation of the institution will not be there there will be autonomy and they can have their own curricula they can have uh, any more researches and uh, <coughs> so freedom is there or will be there now uh, there are some uh, you can say for example they have suggested the academic uh, bank of credit you might have heard academic bank of credit uh, in now you have a freedom you have a choice one course you can do from the college another course you can do from the other college and now up till now the university this year has notified that within india you can join course mm. at per your choice in any institution your credit will be restored in the Yeah, it's a great farm in UGC. All the universities and colleges are to be registered with that. Already, uh, these uh, uh, 
uh, everything is in process and institutions have registers others are in the pipeline so now this is a freedom for the students wherever they want to um, get education where they want to get the better things they can go and join their credit will be restored so this academic bank of credit uh, the facility will be there academic bank of credit is a very it is just like a bank as we have opened the bank uh, account we have a passbook we have id etc uh, and we can see uh, so you can see transaction in our bank uh, copy same way academic bank of credit have facility to student they will be provided id one id will be there and see their accounts how they are restored accumulation everything they can see uh, and uh, the registered um, you can see where a student have registered or taken the admission to so 50% of course they have to complete from their uh, institution where they have uh, taken admission and 50% outside the institution and from bank of uh, credit abc uh, they will uh, transfer their credit to the registered uh, college or university and then they will provide the degree so this is possible you can get the online education swim or mooks etc you can have a vocational you can have a skill development all credit will be restored and they will come to the registered um, college and university and you will get the degree and uh, student can check at any time uh, where uh, what is the number of the credit and where my status but there is a, one thing they have suggested that uh, if you add uh if you want to add the credit yourself it will out you have to write to your institution institution will send to the um, this um, academic bank of credit only through institution so uh, but you can check you can add uh, with this procedure this academic bank of credit is a good facility and all the regulation made by this uh, ugc the, if there is some changes the changes only uh, with the uh, ugc can do if some uh, uh, colleges or universities are not following any regulation etc so they will give sufficient time to improve if they will not improve and they will uh, you can say <coughs> take the necessary action against the institution so this is a, a, a very good uh, you can say facility if we talk to the curriculum all institutions are free to prepare a curriculum but uh, they, there is a one body i will come later on uh, that is a uh, which will prepare the framework common framework for uh, pre primary for the primary for the uh, vocational uh, for the um, higher education technical education a responsibility will be um, general education council and common things will be given around that universities and uh, will be our autonomous colleges which i have discussed in three type they are free uh, to prepare they will be given freedom the 30% of the curriculum related to their environment related to their situation it can be uh, you can say added into the um, framework suggested by the general education council so they have their own freedom uh, for how to assess uh, what type of curriculum credit etc all these things in this uh, in multidisciplinary uh, situation they have also suggested the uh, pedagogy because pedagogy uh, uh, it has been suggested that we want the uh, innovative child we want the creative child uh, <coughs> such situation so that we can have a better performance of the child so in teaching we have a better curriculum framework is from there and then uh, we have you, you can say freedom for 30% to include in the uh, curriculum of the core curriculum pedagogy there are three or four pedagogy they have suggested 
वन इज एक्सपीरियंसल लर्निंग इट हैज बीन एम्फेसाइज इन द पॉलिसी दैट एवरी बॉडी हैज एक्सपीरियंस इन लाइफ so we should provide students in the institution how to work we should involve with the work that is uh, the domain of this psycho motor if we work psychometer cognitive affective simultaneously it is integrated it cannot be separate so uh, and this on the basis of experience of the work uh, you have um, done in the different situation so such situation should be provided to the students they should work in lab they should work in uh, intuition they should have uh, in a different type of the <clears throat> you can problem so they should solve teachers should work as a facilitator not as a you can say uh, one way track as a facilitator uh, to the student and uh, experiential learning should be used for transacting the curriculum now uh, this is another uh, you can say pedagogy has been suggested in this uh, nep that is the mother lead pedagogy i have given the name it but uh, you know why motherly the mother no body is better teacher than mother mother they taught all of us how to eat how to sit how to walk how to uh, perform how to read how to sleep since birth if we will learn all these things because uh, their uh, mother now you are a mother of 50 children so if you behave in this pedagogy definitely uh, and the uh, um, transaction of the curriculum will be very very effective and mother used to tell this story tally other grandmother we know it in the childhood they used to tell this story and storytelling method is a very effective it is very very effective so this emphasize that in transacting the curriculum science social science technical storytelling is a very very important for example because immediately uh, when you talk i will tell you the story immediately the attention came toward uh, you when you will in the classroom for example i am telling you uh, today we have a light bulb we have a light throughout the world but somebody has invented thomas alvin edison has invented it everybody knows it and why i am talking about the mother uh, pedagogy because thomas alvin edison was a weak in study what happens the school thrown him out he said you are not uh, you can say it very difficult to pull on with the studies it is difficult you can, uh, cannot cope up in our school so they, they uh, have given a letter in the name of her mother and uh, written that you difficult to uh, be here you teach himself so mother read the letter child asked mother what is written in it then she said that your headmaster has written that you are extraordinary children our school is not competent to tackle such a brilliant and the talented child so you should teach so mother taught uh thomas alvin edison and he became a great scientist the light bulb was invented by him and today whole world is benefited so see the mother how she taught his son so he made attempt time and again time and again thousand time he could not discover and failed so in one of the interview one body asked said you were failed in thousand time he said no 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 i was not failed there were thousand steps to invent this light bulb see how they are present so this pedagogy has recommended that we should implement we should teach we should transact our curriculum in this way in a positive way through storytelling when when the uh, um, his mother died he found the that chit which was given by that old time by the headmaster he cried 
how mother has taken in a different way and he has made many inventions so many inventions so such a you know pedagogy can improve and uh, the <coughs> result one through there are many stories many things available to we have to teach in our classroom the storytelling method is very very important it has been emphasized uh, the another uh, one uh, method and pedagogy has emphasized sports integrity sports integrity it should be used in the field it should be used in the classroom when we are in the field we learn how to play in a team way how to cooperate with each other how to have a patience if we won the game if we lose the game how to provide leadership so many qualities we develop in the field so if we teach in the classroom through different subjects through physical education uh, you can say subject also so such things should be transacted and integrated sports and the theory and practical the sports integrated uh, pedagogy has also been emphasized in the national education policy and, uh, and the <clears throat> next one is art integrated everybody knows teaching is a art things one teacher can teach effectively another teacher cannot to hear she know how to teach uh, mm-hmm. artistic uh, way of doing the things play important role if you see a beautiful picture on the uh, you can say book on the wall the small children will attract it they will enjoy the so artistic way is a very effective artic art integrated teaching has been emphasized in this policy because <coughs> because you know uh, uh, these are recommended not only their views but larger views consolidated views and research base it has been emphasized and you have seen so uh, now uh, this uh, i was talking about this multidisciplinary because in ancient india uh, literary uh, work such as uh, this kadambari described 64 class and art we have to include all in pedagogy and curriculum all these earlier things or ancient things of our culture of our country we should have all values you can say uh, which should be reflected which should be transacted in through curriculum and pedagogy that is uh, trust right is uh, conduct value uh, peace well, uh, non violence scientific temper you know it in through non violence we have a great example the whole world is quoting our four fathers our uh, the father of the nation uh, mahatmandi he followed the policy of non violence he fought for the freedom ultimately we got the freedom and the whole world remember him and we call him the father so such values we have to inculcate through our education both in school both in colleges Uh, uh through our curricula and the others so this is a very uh, you can say significant things and the need of the hour and which has been emphasized in this now uh, this in teacher education uh, because it is also very important which i used to say and uh, and teacher education the teacher is the most important if we have a quality teacher we have a quality engineer we have quality doctor quality professor everything depend on a teacher and teachers are prepared in the teacher education institution so teacher education institution should be uh, with you can say strong pedagogy with competent um, um, staff competent faculty with adequate structure all uh, this lab etc 
विद एडुकेट जो यू कैन से फील्ड लेवल अटैच्ड विद द स्कूल तो टीचर एजुकेशन देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ रिफॉर्म इट हैज बीन सजेस्टेड इन दिस पॉलिसी दैट टुडे वी हैव 15 प्रोग्राम ऑफ टीचर एजुकेशन वी हैव यू कैन से टू ईयर बी एड वी हैव टू ईयर डिप्लोमा इन एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन वी हैव फोर ईयर एलिमेंट्री डी एल बी एल एड वी हैव मास्टर ऑफ एजुकेशन वी हैव डिप्लोमा इन फिजिकल एजुकेशन बी एड इन फिजिकल एजुकेशन थ्री ईयर बी एड तो मैनी कोर्सेज आर देयर टीचर्स आर वर्किंग इन द डिफरेंट सिस्टम सो हेयर इट हैज बीन एम्फोसाइज दैट आफ्टर टू थाउजेंड थर्टी देर विल बी वन टीचर एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम and that will be four year four year integrated teacher education program why four year because uh, uh, we can provide necessary educate knowledge attitude skill through this program for becoming a better teacher we will have a sufficient time for the practical we have sufficient time for teaching theoretical concept we have sufficient time Time for the pedagogy uh, used in the classroom and outside the classroom in the different situation, and also practice teaching when we go to the in, uh, schools. So uh, this has been emphasized for year after two thousand thirty. All uh, teacher education institution will be converted into the multidisciplinary. There will be no teacher education institution single standalone. they will have multidisciplinary they will have four year why four year because we want to give the more uh, uh, you can say experience more, more professionalism in this and our courses are professional teaching is a profession this is a professional course like engineering and doctor when we have a doctor we want to become doctor after class 12 we can go and compete and we can get so same way engineering after class 12 we can join we can compete so this policy emphasize if you want to become teacher so <clears throat> after class 12 there will be common entrance examination throughout india four year course will be there after 2030 and those who are willing they will go for the teaching practice and one example i want to share with you for example this uh, you know this finland country finland and country you can join all sector you can join all profession but difficult to join the teaching profession in finland there is a dream for so many person they cannot get the opportunity they have a regress entrance test different type of situation out of 100 hardly they select 8 or 10 students so their reputation their status their salary their they are very high as a kid i was reading in the newspaper or somewhere else in germany doctor engineer they are protesting that our, our salary should be like teachers our salary should be equivalent to them uh, because they have a less salary i was reading somewhere else uh, yesterday or day for yesterday so uh, our teacher should be like this if you want to make progress so this uh, and these uh, these course will continue up to 2030 but these will be discontinued and when they want to do the phd so uh, so they have to uh, complete many courses in between either uh, they have to teach either they have to work with some school or uh, some research assignment or some teaching assignment they have to join that and only then they will get the phd uh, <clears throat> in teacher education for this in, in service education it has been suggested that we should have a continuous in service education because it has been emphasized in 1986 policy as i have told you and there are 66 uh, hrdc in the country there are 82 uh, you can say different institution set up under under pandir mohan malviya so they are time and again organizing and it is very essential for the capacity development program as we are having today so in service education through structure 
in the university or uh, uh, more than 1000 university can also organize are also organizing different capacity building program more than 52000 colleges are also organizing the different type of the program webinar seminar conference capacity building program beside all these um, uh, hrdcs and the, uh, the fdc etc so there is a uh, very uh, you can say uh, effective uh, um, structure available in our country for organizing the training program for the faculty of uh, higher education. In same way, we have a 15,000 schools. So there is an effective structure from top to bottom. We have NCRT at the uh, top in NCRT for the national level. Then we have uh, State Council of Educational Research and Training, all the state and university mostly. And then we have a uh, DIGHT District Institute of Education and Training in all the districts. We have uh, uh, other advanced level of the research institutes like College of Teacher Education within five and six districts. And we have Institute of Advanced Studies and Education uh, within the 20 uh, districts. Uh, 20 or more uh, for the higher education, for the secondary, for providing the training to the teacher educator of diet and city. And we have a block level institution that is BR, block resource center. We have also uh, BITE. You might have heard BITE. You may, this will be strange for you. Block Institute of Teacher Education. They uh, in the interior backward uh, districts. And backward, there are the bites. They provide the teaching degree of the uh, elementary and the secondary level. So we have cluster level training program. We have a school or institution level program. And this policy has recommended school complex. It's a, uh, another important thing. Within five or ten schools, there will be one complex in a higher institution. There, all resources will be there. If one school is not having uh, some teacher, sometimes they can provide. They have resources. They have, uh, you can available. Uh, the teacher is there. Some uh, retired person is there. So they can assist the school. The teaching will not be suffered. So there will be so many uh, school complexes are being set up in the light of this uh, policy. And those teachers... Uh, uh, because their courses like up capacity building uh, will be organized and are being organized continuously uh, from all these CRC, VRC, white diet, SCRT, NCRT in collaboration with each other and in uh, collaboration with the university also. But uh, this, uh, uh, <coughs> you can say this um, Swim and Diksha these platform also can be used. Uh, they can have a number of courses they can complete. They will get the uh, UGC has also given freedom for the dual degree uh, for doing the two degrees simultaneously. These platform are available and uh, are being used by the many faculty member of the country. So these are also, you can say, uh, facility for all the faculty for the develop the capacity. Now, uh, in uh, uh, this vocationalization, as I have already told you, our um, local knowledge, local vidya, on all these are very essential uh, to have the vocationalization courses. Now we have upward vocationalization from, as I have stated with you just before that, that now upward mobility. After 12, you can have a upward linkages. You can join the diploma engineer, you can join the engineer. Uh, so, uh, because you know this vocational is a very very important for the skill development we have ministry of, uh, of skill development we have universities and there is a need that we should provide the um, <clears throat> Um, such type of training for the skill development for the startup program as prime I minister mean, used to size time and again you know uh, if I share with you some of these data from the outside India. We have only 5% vocational education in our country. In USA, it is more than 50%. In Germany, it is more than 75%. And in South Korea, more than 96% are skilled workers. Therefore, South Korea is very advanced. 
So this policy says that by 2025, 50 percent of learners should be there, and they in uh, you can say <clears throat> the uh, national skill qualification framework has been developed in 2013. Uh, it will be revised by the ministry and by the uh, you can say NCRT and other institution. This is also very very uh, you can say significant because our um, cultural, our look with the, our uh, <clears throat> things available in our society will be, uh, you can say, implemented in our curriculum and we can develop the personality of the child in a better and effective way because this psychomotor part is, was missing, which has been emphasized in this. Now, uh, there is a um, further research because research, uh, our country is allocating very less money that is 0.69 percent of the gdp but in other countries developed countries more than four percent for example is 0.3 us about three percent so they have more and more research if we conduct researches we will make progress those countries are conducting researches they are far ahead Everybody knows it. We also know it. So our country is also in the pipeline. We are also conducting researches in universities uh, and the um, higher education institution. So things are improving, but we need that we should more, more researches. For that, uh, the National Research Foundation is being set up. A draft is ready and 50,000 crore rupees uh, have been 15,000 crore rupees have been sanctioned in the earlier budget in 2021. Board of Governor uh, will be constitution and the structure from top to bottom will be, uh, uh, you can say, prepared. Board of Governor will be researcher, scientist of the country, uh, no interference of the government of India. They will promote researches in every every discipline and whose money will be provided including uh, the small project the major project the, the phd project national projects the money will be available and uh, this will be a significant thing for our country because we will have a more opportunity with the help of national research foundation to have more and more touches because uh, uh, there are some times we feel that funds are not available for conducting the research in the institution. And you know it and these are the feelings some of the institution and faculty sometimes establishing this. I think there will be no scarcity of money. This is a very important and very good, uh, you can say, recommendation made in this uh, <clears throat> policy on draft is ready and the things will be on the field uh, very soon. So India will have uh, this facility. Now <coughs> there is regulatory. At present we have many regulatory bodies. All courses have regulatory body. All courses. Teacher education have National Council of Teachers Teacher education, higher education as a university education commission, technical education, all India council of education. There is a um, medical council of India uh, for medical, for, men, for all, uh, for nursing, any, uh, every discipline has a regulatory body. But these regulatory body, uh, are, you know, there is a, some feeling or there is a report from all section of the society some unwanted things are going on somewhere, not at all places. Because every regulatory body has all power. For example, UGC. UGC does curriculum. What type of curriculum should be there in all of the country, in all of the university? You know it very well. They have developed the... Uh, <coughs> recently, uh, <coughs> this is in 91, 2001, and now also they have developed in 2019 the important uh, the core curriculum uh, core aspect uh, of the all disciplines and the 
uh, the un- <coughs> universities are to frame their curriculum uh, accordingly with some flexibility some you can say uh, some flexibility has been provided so that is one thing uh, second thing they so accredit the institution they accredit the university they provide recognition to the university they also provide recognition of the course to be opened in the university and colleges this power is also with the ujc but have uh, you can say uh, regulation they prepared the regulation normal standard nac is there is a part of the um, ujc and they also provide fund on the basis of that all powers are with the ujc same way uh, <clears throat> all powers are with the nct same way all power are with the aict and others uh, you can say discipline you will find the regulatory body and what regulatory body says you have to follow each and every Uh, recommendation otherwise you will not get recognition and you will not able to pull on the courses and courses will are not be recognized if the nc regulatory body does not recognize so uh, uh, this policy has recommended that we should have separate verticals independent verticals there should be one body the higher education commission of india higher education commission of india one body a single regulatory body under that there will be four independent bodies no relation with each other but in implementation they can use the recommendation of each other for example this higher education council of commission of india national higher education regulatory council national higher education regulatory council will regulate will prepare norm and standard of different courses the it has been written that regulation will be light but very tight it will be implemented very tightly and uh, what are acts set set available to the different uh, <clears throat> you can say the regulatory bodies these will be will be relook so they will prepare the regulation that is separate body second body is national accreditation council nac so benchmark for highest accreditation will be quality self governance autonomy based on the institutional development plan ye jo hai aapka normal standards regulatory body mein hai that will be uh, you can say base for recognizing or recommending the colleges and university a separate body and third vertical on the basis of the recognition of recommendation of the nac then you can get the fund from the uh, you know higher education grant council that will be third higher education so this then you can get the scholarship and funds and all uh, the uh, if you fulfill the criteria norm nac uh, accredit and you get the money and fourth will be very important that is general education council general education council uh will focus on the academic work they will prepare the uh, different curriculum framework different courses of the different program or all regulatory body except uh, medical and uh, law all will be merged for example uh, this ugc and this nct aict management sub is uh, every all will be merged and academic work will be there curricula co curricula textual material examination material etc will be there uh, uh, this uh, uh, national skill qualification framework all will be framed by the general education policy uh, general education council for standard setting this will be unique focus on the work uh, for preparing the better professional in all the different sectors so this is a very good you can say uh, recommendation and things are coming very soon because slowly slowly ugc has merged in some program uh, um, ugc ct like that you will see in the newspaper daily some uh, development is going on and things will be uh, on the ground very soon
so standard setting body this uh, <clears throat> body is going to set up and thing will improve and then mal practices which you are mentioning time and again i hope these will not be there so uh, now uh, one or two more thing which i will share then if there are some question etc then we can uh, take up the question uh, <clears throat> are Adult learning, adult education is very important in our country. It is working for so many years because, you know, in every uh, every home we have an adult, we have a father, we have grandfathers. So they used to teach the children. If our adults are educated, definitely they will help. And those educated parents or the grandparents, their children' performance is better because in schools, whatever they have learned, they can also be uh, you can say support the family. So adult education is very important and uh, it has been em uh, emphasized that we should provide the 100% literacy, though a lot of progress has been uh, made because already this program is going on. The for foundation literacy, critical life skill, vocal skill, all such things should be in the adult education curriculum. And uh, I have asked already shared about wage promotion because uh, mother tongue has been promoted and it has been reported in the UNESCO report. 200 languages have already been abolished because we, we have a very large country and different persons and different places and different situation, different geographical area, they have the different languages, foreign as a tribal, have so many languages, but those are script are not prepared. Formal education are not there. If the adult person of the family is dead, the language is also dead. So it has been reported in the uh, UNESCO report. And it is also reported if you will not look after another 200 hours going, going to be abolished. And now at least uh, the uh, language uh, um, you can say included in constitution. Entities should be prepared. Supplementary material should be prepared. So the uh, the in um, four year uh, beard uh, program, there is uh, this art, music, philosophy, etc. All things should be taken into consideration. Otherwise, our language uh, will be <coughs> abolished. If we see the technology, uh, technology is very important, very well. If technology not would have be there. Till today, there would have been no teaching in any university and schools and colleges. On March 2020, government of India declared lockdown. Studies were closed. Teaching were closed in both school, universities and colleges. Examination were also postponed. But we are one of the global leader in ICT. Though that day everybody was shocked, but slowly within four or five and a half days, we switch over to the alternative mode in ICT. We restored our teaching through ICT. We restored our examination through ICT. We never thought in our 2020 that we can have a examination through online. Children can take examination at their home. Their parents can act as a supervisor. It has been reported many times. And those children who are cheating, so, so many cheating cases have though they are appearing from their examination. There are hundreds of platforms for the technologies are available. So friend, even then for the further progress, there is a one another form for the uh, this technology is being uh, <coughs> national educational technology form autonomous body is being set up though we have such department in all universities colleges in NCRT there is a very huge department of Central Institute of Education Technology so like that things are there. But finiting for guiding all these institutions, separate national educational technology form is going to be set up. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, um, things are in progress. 
though we are very advanced in this. Uh, for financial support, <coughs> weaker uh, student, uh, this policy says it to marry student belonging to SC, ST, OBC, and other, uh, um, you can say, uh, disadvantaged section of the society will be provided on priority. National scholarship portal support foster track progress student receiving scholarship. Private HIs will also offer larger number of the free ships and scholarship to their students. Mm. Things are also uh, available and provision. Many things are there, but these will be coordinated. So, uh, for infrastructure, uh, digital infrastructure, own platform tool, digital content, and digital repository uh, um, will be, um, you can say, provided or created in the uh, places which are not available. This is a focus. Uh, for this policy. So, uh, friends, there are many uh, for implementation. The government of India uh, uh, has had many committees, many, com uh, you can say, at the state level. And CAVE is also, uh, <clears throat> you can say, playing a major role. NCRT is also playing a major role. Ministry set up many committees or responsible because target has been mentioned in this policy, number one. And responsibility has also been assigned to the different institutions, framework to be prepared and for preparing the different infrastructure, etc. So uh, <clears throat> now uh, implementation is going on uh, with both the committees uh, formed by the different state and central government or cave, uh, etc. But the uh, one thing I will share with you. If we want to implement it in a very, very effective way, we, every person in the country, all 1,000 universities or more, 15,000 schools or more, or other institution, every institution develop their plan, institutional plan. What are their strength? What are their weakness? How they will uh, overcome this? How they involve the faculty in effectively? How they <laughs> utilize the infrastructure? How they um, um, utilize the expertise available in nearby our community? How will they will feed up the uh, requirement of the surroundings? All things we have to see, we have to anal analyze, and then. The institution plan will go to district, will go to region, will go to state, and state will consolidate. And after consolidation, requirement of the whole state reflect, then it will go to the Ministry of Education. So, Ministry of Education will get the information of the whole of the country, and it the Ministry of Education to implement this policy as per the target group, target date mentioned effectively. So uh, this is, is my suggestion. The government of India is already uh, using various modality, but this will also be a very important problem. Think planning should be, planning should not be from top to bottom. At top, so many things are not noticed about we It's a very big uh, country. What is the problem of the coastal area? What is the hill area? Or the last near China border, near Pakistan border. It's a very, very difficult. But if every institution will develop, we will get the situation of whole country and uh, very easy to implement. So thank you very much. Uh, I have taken a lot of time. And if there is any question, any suggestion, you are most welcome. Any question, any suggestion, because, you know, lot of people have been discussed in the capacity building program. The capacity building should be, building program should be organized on continuous basis timeline to update the knowledge, information, attitude, aptitude, and skills 
of our faculty who are working in the different institute of higher learning. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, it was a wonderful journey with you uh, on the topic of uh, uh, NEP 2020 capacity building of faculty. And uh, it was uh, really uh, knowledge worthy that uh, you uh, share your knowledge and experience with this uh, HRDC Gujarat University and all the participants of uh, this workshop. Friends, as we know that new education policy has touched the untouched part of education. So uh, I'm sure that uh, Professor S.K. Yadavji has uh, prescribably uh, very uh, deeply define this uh, objective of this workshop of capacity building of faculty so thank you so, so much sir once again on behalf of hrdc gujarat yeah. university and so, uh, friends uh, i uh, i'm very happy to share that this hrdc of gujarat university has created so many historical uh, events uh, during this pandemic uh, and uh, nowadays uh, we are focusing on this new education policy and we are uh, making uh, our participants uh, to improve their uh, academic knowledge and their efficiency. So I'm sure that uh, we'll have a great time with Professor S.K. Yadavji, great learning with Professor S.K. Yadavji. And once again, thank you so much, sir. So, madam, I am also thankful to you for giving me opportunity to share my experience. Really, thank you very much for you have talked to me and given opportunity. I'm thankful, I hope, in uh, uh, program the capacity about the NEP, maybe uh, they have learned, but they might have learned some additional thing which I have shared. So thank you very much to your director, to you, to Brambert, uh, this uh, Saab, and all the participants. So thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Uh, friends, as we know that. Uh, <coughs> One of the bold preposition of this policy, uh, this new education policy states that either stand alone institution should transform themselves into a multidisciplinary mode or they will have to close. So now it's uh, right time to sharpen our X and uh, be ready uh, with this uh, guideline of new education policy. Um, knowledge, uh, to the journey of knowledge from the uh, how to what to when and uh, it's right time to uh, practice this new education policy uh, to the classroom so friends once again thank you so much all the participants and the entire team of hrdc gujarat university i would like to thank you our Honorable Vice Chancellor of Gujarat University, uh, Professor Dr. Himanshu Pandyaji. And uh, I would like to thank you, our Registrar of uh, our Gujarat University, Dr. P.M. Patel, sir, and the uh, administrative staff of HRDC Gujarat University, my respected director of HRDC Gujarat University, Professor uh, Joshi sir and my senior colleague, Professor C.G. Brambert. And again, last but not least, all the participants, I'm thanking all of you. Once again, thank you one and all. Have a great day. Be with HRDC Gujarat University. Thank you. Thank you. Namaskar.